So you've watched all the YouTube videos and you've decided that you're going to jump into the world of film photography. Well, my friend, if only the decision were that simple. Now you've got to decide which format you want to shoot. We're going to ignore all the psychopaths that want to shoot 4x5 and 8x10 large format and get right to the heart of the matter. Should you shoot 35mm film or should you shoot 120? So first, let's talk about 35mm film. This is the most common film format, and this is the format you're most likely to encounter. And I'm currently holding a Nikon FM2 SLR. This is one of my favorite cameras, and this camera is a good example of what you can expect when you get into 35mm in terms of size and shape. This is a very average size camera. It's not too big, it's not too small, and it's not too heavy. And it's also not very expensive. And that brings me to the first distinction between 35mm and 120mm format, is the cost of the cameras and lenses themselves. 35 millimeter cameras on the whole are really cheap. This is a 200 or 250 dollar camera, but you can find 35 millimeter cameras far cheaper, including currently manufactured disposable cameras for 20, 30 dollars. Another thing to factor into that cost is the cost of film. 35 millimeter film is gonna be a lot cheaper per shot than 120 millimeter. With 35 millimeter film, you're gonna be getting at least 24 exposures per roll and sometimes 36 exposures per roll. So the cost per roll is really cheap and when you get into the development cost, when you send it to a lab, it costs about the same to develop a roll of 120 millimeter film or 35 millimeter film. So, so per shot, 35 millimeter is gonna win the day there. So if you're concerned about saving a little money, that's gonna weigh heavily in favor of 35 millimeter for you. It's also worth talking about the available film stocks. With 35 millimeter cameras, this being the most common film format, there are the most available film stocks for this. There are dozens of film stocks out there for you to try, so that weighs in the favor of 35 millimeter as well. 35 millimeter is also more convenient from there being more labs to develop 35 millimeter to the availability of the film itself. I mean, I can still buy 35 millimeter film at my local Walmart at least the Fuji Superior stuff. You're gonna have a much easier time finding 35 millimeter film versus 120. 35 millimeters also gonna yield more shots per roll as well. Like I talked about a second ago, you're either gonna be dealing with 24 shots per roll or 36 shots per roll. So if you wanna get more out of that roll of film that you put into the camera, 35 millimeter is gonna offer more on that front. Also with 35 millimeter being the smaller film format, it's gonna yield a much more grainy analog look than medium format as well. So if that's something you're into, you may get more of that film aesthetic that you're concerned about from 35 millimeter film. 35 millimeter cameras are also much smaller, more portable systems as well. This camera right here, and like I said, this is a very typical size camera. It's so small and unobtrusive, I can slot it into a bag and hardly even know it's there. Also, if you're concerned with automatic film modes, there are vastly more options available for you in the 35 millimeter range. 120 format, there are a few systems that offer some automatic modes, but far and wide, if you're concerned with getting automatic functions with the camera, 35 millimeter is where you're gonna be. Most of the consumer cameras from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, those film cameras have automatic functions. There are tons of those available from the big box camera manufacturers like Nikon and Canon. If that's something you're interested in, having autofocus, auto exposure, flash, those kinds of things, 35 millimeter is gonna be the place to be, which I think in turn leads to a much more casual shooting approach. If you don't wanna put too much thought into your film photography and you're the kind of shooter that just goes out and likes to fire off a lot of shots, an Allen Iverson style film photographer, if you know what I mean, 35 millimeter is gonna be the format for you. Let's talk about some of the cons of 35 millimeter format. Those big, long 36 exposure rolls. At least for me, I have a terrible time going out and shooting 36 exposures of one subject. So lots of times I'm left stuck in the middle of a roll of film on my 35 millimeter cameras and then I have to wait for similar shooting conditions to use that film again. I probably had a roll of Portrait 800 in my FM2 for a month waiting for another situation where I could go out and shoot some nighttime exposures. Take advantage of that fast film speed. So 36 exposures, that requires some commitment. You need to be firing off some shots or you're gonna get hung up in the middle of a roll. Also when shooting 35, you're gonna be getting vastly lower image quality as compared to medium format film. The 35 millimeter frame is a fraction of the medium format frame. And just by nature of having that bigger piece of film, you're gonna be getting a lot higher image quality, a lot more resolution. If you're concerned with higher image quality, you're probably not gonna wanna be shooting 35 millimeter. Something we talked about with the pros, but it's also a con, is that 35 millimeter lends itself to a casual shooting approach. At least for me, I'm not really a casual casual shooter. I don't take my film cameras out and just fire off a million shots, but your miles may vary. Again, this could be a pro or a con, but the, the grainy aesthetic that comes along with 35 millimeter. I'm really indifferent as grain goes. I don't mind it. I'm not trying to have my photos look like snowstorms unless they absolutely have to. 
So let's talk about a medium format camera. And you see I have my Mamiya M645, my favorite camera that I use. Spoiler alert, love this thing. This camera is probably not as typical of medium format as the FM2 is of 35 millimeter. Because this camera uses 645 medium format towards the smaller end of medium format. This may be a little smaller than the average run of the mill medium format camera. Six by six cameras, six by seven cameras, and even six by nine cameras can be much larger than this. That leads me to one of the quirks of medium format shooting is not all medium format is created equal. This is the smallest medium format camera, 645, but like I said, there are other formats, 6x6, which is square format, like a Hasselblad or a Roloflex, 6x7 format, the Mamiya 67, the Mamiya RZ67, the Pentax 67, and then you have 6x8 and 6x9 format as well. Uh, getting into the Texas Laka range with the Fuji. So not all medium format 120 film is created equal. And with each of these cameras using different amounts of the film, that's gonna yield different amounts of shots per roll. This camera, for example, 645, this is the most amount of shots per roll you're gonna get in medium format at 16. But on the other end of the spectrum, six by nine, you're gonna get about eight. And the other formats lie somewhere in between. But that is kind of a strength of the system is you can kind of choose how deep into medium format you wanna go. I obviously chose a more casual route, kind of splitting the difference. The convenience of 35 millimeter and the extremes of six by nine shooting. One of the best things about medium format has to be the image quality. The image quality is so much better with medium format shots versus 35 millimeter. It's so much better with medium format. It makes it really hard to go back and shoot 35 millimeter once you own a medium format camera. So that's to me the biggest selling point of the medium format system is that much larger negative, that much higher image quality. And finally, my favorite thing about medium format is the fewer shots per roll. Like I said, this camera gets 16 shots per roll and that's just about right. I can go out and have a good night of shooting, a good day of shooting, and finish up that roll and not have to leave my camera and not have to leave the roll of film stranded somewhere in the middle and then try to find another shooting situation to finish off the roll. As weird as it sounds, I actually enjoy not having to feel the obligation of going out and shooting 36 shots every time that I go out to shoot. It's much more manageable for me to shoot 16. Kind of the bad things about medium format though, obviously the size and weight. I'm holding this camera right here it's very, very heavy. And like I said, this is towards the lighter end of medium format. There are much, much larger cameras than this. Another thing, another thing is, <clears throat> another thing that could be perceived as a negative is this camera is all manual everything, and you're gonna run into that a lot in medium format. Also, there are very few cheap bodies out there. This is due to a multitude of factors. Back in their heyday, medium format was the professional standard, so there weren't that many bodies out there to begin with. These were not consumer bodies, these were professional bodies. So there weren't that many cameras like this on the market. Um, the other thing is YouTubers have blown up making videos about specific medium format cameras, and the prices of those cameras have just went to the moon. I'm thinking about the Mamiya RZ67. I can think five years ago, those were like a hundred or two hundred dollars on eBay. And once Willem started making videos about them, pff. the biggest negative to me when it comes to medium format shooting though, is the lack of film stock. There just aren't as many available for medium format. You get outside of the film stocks produced by the major manufacturers and you just aren't gonna find that much available in the way of obscure kind of interesting film stocks for medium format. So now that we've talked about some of the strengths and weaknesses associated with these two different film formats, who are each of these four? I think the 35 millimeter format is best for somebody who is concerned with convenience, who wants to have the ability to shoot more shots, and is also not wanting to spend as much money um, with their film photography. The medium format is just the opposite of that. It's for somebody who has a slower, more deliberate shooting style, who isn't concerned about shooting a million shots. It's for somebody who really wants to plan out their shots, is more focused on quality. Both of these camera systems have their strengths and weaknesses, and it's up to you to decide which one is best for you. I find myself most of the time shooting my medium format system, but I also recognize and appreciate the merits of the 35 system. And if you wanna follow me down the path of medium format, check out this video where I show you five affordable medium format camera systems. Systems.